Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I am going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to do the postural analysis in the anterior and the posterior view or you can also say frontal view. So it's going to be a very short topic because there is nothing much to cover and you can grasp this concept very easily. So let's dive into the topic. First from the anterior view when we will see, we will see that the line of gravity will pass right through the center correct dividing the body into right and left half and the eyes and the ears we need to see that they are in the same level so i draw the eyes over here and the ears need to be at the same level and then as you come down you can see this angle that is formed between your neck and the shoulder right now this angle needs to be equal on both the sides now we need to keep in mind that always not in all people you'll see this angle equally for example i have a slightly depressed right shoulder and this is very commonly seen in many people uh, across the population. This is because you are using your right side a lot because of which all the tendons muscles on the right side are comparatively more lax compared to the left side. And this is why your right shoulder can be slightly depressed compared to the left one. Again, we need to realize that all the bodies are not perfectly symmetrical. There will always be asymmetry from right to left because we use our body that way, right? We use right hand more dominantly compared to the left so these asymmetries are bound to be but what we need to realize is when we correlate these with the clinical findings other clinical findings like pain that's when we can come up with some diagnosis or we can figure out what is the problem with the body correct so let's go ahead apart from the symmetrical angle that i was talking about between your neck and shoulder you also need to look at the shoulders relative position that is it is normally in a relatively externally rotated position compared to an internally rotated position then if you go down at the hips the line of gravity will pass through the umbilicus so let me draw the umbilicus over here and apart from the umbilicus if you come down there is also the bony prominence over here right the asis which will be again equally distance from the line of gravity so over here at the pelvis if the asis is not at the same level what what does it mean it means that somewhere down over here there is an asymmetry which is causing your asis not to be at the same level either the femur is short which is causing the pelvis on one side to drop or muscles on the right or the left whichever side it is lower that means the muscles on either side the abductors are not acting properly which is causing the pelvis to drop on one side we have seen signs like trendlenburg right where the body is not able to maintain the hip in abduction correct this is the pelvis and this is your femur and because your body is not strong enough to keep the femur in abduction the weak abductors cause the pelvis to drop correct this concept i have discussed in detail in the hip biomechanics in single leg and double leg stance you can go and check that out i'll link it over here on top so these are the things you need to look in for correct pelvis at the same line is a very important point that you always need to check it can tell you about leg line discrepancy if the person has had a fracture in the past that can create this leg line discrepancy and put pelvis in a slightly tilted position correct as you go even more down the line of gravity will pass between both your knees right so knees will be equidistant and the patella on the knee will be facing exactly front correct and then if you go even further down there will be the medial malleoli which will be again equally distant from the line of gravity so these are the some of the markings that you can see and check for when you are analyzing a posture from the anterior view then going on to the posterior view the line of gravity over here passes through the middle of your head and then if you come down the arms will be hanging by side naturally over here another thing you can notice and also in the anterior view you can notice this the distance that is present between your arm and the back over here so if you can see by mistake when i was drawing 
I kept a lesser distance over here and more over here, which actually works in my favor because I want to add this point that sometimes in people you can see this difference <clears throat> that the space between your arm and the back will be more compared to the other side. And this is also seen commonly in people because of the latissimus dorsi bulk. So on the right side where they use more of their right side, the latissimus dorsi must be well developed, which won't give any space over here and there will be any space between your arms and the back compared to the left side where the muscle is not that well developed you can see this space so again this asymmetry that you can see is totally normal and seen in many people going ahead the scapula which is a big one because if there is any shoulder problem first thing you want to see is the scapula check how the scapula is placed where is the position of the scapula if it's slightly upwardly rotated or too downwardly rotated right so scapula will lie flat on the ribcage there shouldn't be any winging correct winging would be like this correct winging shouldn't be there you'll see a medial border or slightly inferior border changes with the type of winging that is seen i like to talk about scapula and the analysis and the observation and the palpation of it in a separate video but you need to look at the scapula which is a very important part of analysis from the posterior view then going ahead the PSIS, the two dimples will be again equally distant and the gluteal folds are have to be symmetrical, correct? Then if you go even further down, there will be the knees which will be again equally distant and then the heel. At heel it is very interesting to see that the heel is in line with your TA, right? The TA will be coming down and inserting into your heel like that. I will be talking about what are the pathological findings that are seen in the next video. So basically this has to be in line. If it's if your calcaneum is slightly inverted or everted, that means your foot might have lost the arch, right? The arch that is present in your foot might be lost with a everted calcaneum. We, again, we will discuss about this in detail in the next video. So that's all we have for an overview of a anterior posterior analysis. You need to see that the line of gravity bisects the body perfectly but always the symmetry might not be there because of the muscle bulks and because the way you are using your body maybe you might be right dominant or left dominant so you need to always correlate the findings of the anterior and posterior view along with the symptoms and the MMT and the strength and the range of motion of each joint and that will give you a better and a clear picture right so with that, we finish off this topic. That's all for today guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out. Also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. And see you soon in the next video.